The Brethren of Purity Arabic, Akwan al-Safa translate. Ikhwan al-Safa, also the Brethren of Sincerity were a secret society of Muslim philosophers in Basra, Iraq, in the 8th or 10th century CE. The structure of this mysterious organization and the identities of its members have never been clear. Their esoteric teachings and philosophy are expounded in an epistolary style in the Encyclopedia of the Brethren of Purity a giant compendium of 52 epistles that would greatly influence later encyclopedias. A good deal of Muslim and Western scholarship has been spent on just pinning down the identities of the Brethren and the century in which they were active. Name The Arabic phrase ikhwan as saf short for, among many possible transcriptions, ikhwan as saf wa kalan al wafa wa al al hamd wa ibn al majd, meaning, brethren of purity, loyal friends, people worthy of praise and sons of glory, can be translated as either the brethren of purity or the brethren of sincerity. Various scholars such as Ian Netton prefer of purity because of the group's ascetic impulses towards purity and salvation. A suggestion made by Ignac Goldziher, and later written about by Philip Curry Hitty in his History of the Arabs, is that the name is taken from a story in Kalila Wadamna, in which a group of animals, by acting as faithful friends Ikhwan al -Safa, escape the snares of the hunter. The story concerns a Barbary dove and its companions who get entangled in the net of a hunter seeking birds. Together, they leave themselves and the ensnaring net to a nearby rat, who is gracious enough to gnaw the birds free of the net. Impressed by the rat's altruistic deed, a crow becomes the rat's friend. Soon a tortoise and gazelle also join the company of animals. After some time, the gazelle is trapped by another net, with the aid of the others and the good rat. The gazelle is soon freed, but the tortoise fails to leave swiftly enough and is himself captured by the hunter. In the final turn of events, the gazelle repays the tortoise by serving as a decoy and distracting the hunter while the rat and the others free the tortoise. After this, the animals are designated as the Iqwan al Safa. This story is mentioned as an exemplum when the brethren speak of mutual aid in one Rizala epistle, a crucial part of their system of ethics that has been summarized thus. In this brotherhood, self is forgotten, all act by the help of each, all rely upon each for succor and advice, and if a brother sees it will be good for another that he should sacrifice his life for him, he willingly gives it. Topic. Meetings The brethren regularly met on a fixed schedule. The meetings apparently took place on three evenings of each month, once near the beginning, in which speeches were given, another towards the middle, apparently concerning astronomy and astrology, and the third between the end of the month and the twenty-fifth of that month. During the third one, they recited hymns with philosophical content. During their meetings and possibly also during the three feasts they held, on the dates of the sun's entry into the zodiac signs, Ram, Cancer, and Balance which double as the vernal equinox, summer solstice, and autumnal equinox, beyond the usual lectures and discussions, they would engage in some manner of liturgy reminiscent of the Haranians. <laughs> Ranks Hierarchy was a major theme in their encyclopedia, and unsurprisingly, the brethren loosely divided themselves up into four ranks by age. The age guidelines would not have been firm, as for example, such an exemplar of the fourth rank as Jesus would have been too young if the age guidelines were absolute and fixed. Compare the similar division of the encyclopedia into four sections and the Jabberite symbolism of four. The ranks were the craftsmen. A craftsman had to be at least 15 years of age, their honorific was the pious and compassionate al abrar wa al ruhama The political leaders. A political leader had to be at least 30 years of age, their honorific was the good and excellent al akyar wa al fudala The kings. A king had to be at least 40 years of age, their honorific was the excellent and noble al fudala al kiram the prophets and philosophers, the most aspired to, the final and highest rank of the brethren, to become a prophet or philosopher a man had to be at least fifty years old, their honorific compared them to historical luminaries such as Jesus, Socrates, or Muhammad who were also classified as kings, this rank was the angelic rank, al-martabat al, al malikiyah 
Topic: Identities. There have been a number of theories as to the authors of the Brethren. Though some members of the Ikhwan are known, it is not easy to work out exactly who, or how many, were part of this group of writers. The members referred to themselves as, "...sleepers in the cave," Rasail 4, p. 18, a hidden intellectual presence. In one passage they give as their reason for hiding their secrets from the people, not as fear of earthly violence, but as desire to protect their God-given gifts from the world Rasail 4, p. 166. Yet they were well aware that their esoteric teachings might provoke unrest, and the various calamities suffered by the successors of the Prophet may have seemed good reason to remain hidden. <laughs> Ismaili theories on the Brethren Among the Ismaili groups and missionaries who favored the encyclopedia, authorship was sometimes ascribed to one or another hidden imam. This theory is recounted in Al-Kifti's biographical compendium of philosophers and doctors, the Chronicle of the Learned, Akbar al-Hukamah or Tabakat al-Hukamah. Some modern scholars have argued for an Ismaili origin to the writings. Ian Richard Netton writes in Muslim Neoplatonists, London, 1982, p. 80, that the Ikhwan's concepts of exegesis of both Quran and Islamic tradition were tinged with the esoterism of the Ismailis. Whilst according to Yves Marquette, it seems indisputable that the epistles represent the state of Ismaili doctrine at the time of their compositions. Veed. Encyclopedia of Islam. 1960, p. 1071. Bernard Lewis in The Origins of Ismailism. London, 1940, p. 44. Was more cautious than Faizi, ranking the epistles among books which, though closely related to Ismailism, may not actually have been Ismaili, despite their Batini inspiration. Ibn Kifti, d. 646-1248, reporting in the 7th, 13th century in Tariq i Hukama, p. 82, that opinions differed about the authors of the epistles. Some people attributed to an Alid Imam, proffering various names, whereas other put forward as author some early Mutazilite theologians. Among the Syrian Ismailis, the earliest reference of the epistles and its relation with the Ismailis is given in Kitab Fusil Wal Akbar by Nuruddin bin Ahmad. D. Another important work, Al Usul Wal Ahakam, by Abul Mali Haydam bin Imran bin Zura, d. writes that these dais, and other dais with them, collaborated in composing long epistles, fifty-two in number, on various branches of learning." It implies the epistles being the product of the joint efforts of the Ismaili dais. Among the Yamanite traces, the earliest reference of the epistles is found in the fragments of Surat ibn Hashab by Jafar bin Mansur al-Yaman, al-Day Jafar bn Mansur alam who lived between 278 and 369 and writes, He Imam Taqi Muhammad went through many a difficulty and fear and the destruction of his family, whose description cannot be lengthier, until he issued Ansar the epistles and was contacted by a man called Abu Ghaffar from among his dais. He charged him with the mission as was necessary and asked him to keep his identity concealed." This source not only asserts the connection of the epistles with the Ismailis, but also indicates that the Imam himself was not the sole author or Mu'alif, but only the issuer or presenter al It suggests that the text of the philosophical deliberations was given a final touching by the Imam, and the approved text was delivered to Abu Ghaffar to be forwarded possibly to the Ikhwan in Basra secretly. Since the orthodox circles and the ruling power had portrayed a wrong image of Ismailism, the names of the compilers were concealed. The prominent members of the secret association seem to be however, Abul Hassan al-Tirmizi, Abdullah bin Mubarak, Abdullah bin Hamdan, Abdullah bin Maimon, Said bin Hussein etc. The other Yamanite source connecting the epistles with the Ismailis was the writing of Sayyadna Ibrahim bin al hussein al-Hamidi d. 557 1160 seconds, who wrote, Kans ul Walad. After him, there followed, Al Anwar ul Latifa, by Sayyadna Muhammad bin Tahir, d. 584 1188, Tanba al Ghafilan, by Sayyadna Haydam bin Ibrahim al Hamidi, d. 596 1199. 
Damai al Batil wa Hatf ul Munazil by Sayyadna Ali bin Muhammad bin al Walid al Anf. D. 612 1215. Rizalat al Wahida by Sayyadna Hussain bin Ali al Anf. D. 667 1268. And Uyunul Akbar. By Sayyadna Idris bin Hassan Imaduddin, d. 872-1468, etc. According to Iqwan as Safa, Rasail 21st, p. 166. Know that among us there are kings, princes, caliphs, sultans, chiefs, ministers, administrators, tax agents, treasurers, officers, chamberlains, notables, nobles, servants of kings, and their military supporters. Among us too there are merchants, artisans, agriculturists and stock breeders. There are builders, landowners, the worthy and wealthy, gentlefolk and possessors of all many virtues. We also have persons of culture, of science, of piety and of virtue. We have orators, poets, eloquent persons, theologians, grammarians, tellers of tales and purveyors of lore, narrators of traditions, readers, scholars, jurists, judges, magistrates and ecstatics. Among us too there are philosophers, sages, geometers, astronomers, naturalists, physicians, diviners, soothsayers, casters of spells and enchantments, interpreters of dreams, alchemists, astrologers, and many other sorts, too many to mention. al Tafidi. Al Kifti, however, denigrates this account and instead turns to a comment he discovered, written by Abu Hayyan al Tafidi d. 1023 in his Kitab al Imta, written between 983 and 985, a collection of 37 seances at the court of Ibn Sadan, vizier of the Bayad ruler Samsam al Dalla. Apparently, al Tafidi was close to Zayd ibn Rifa, praising his intellect, ability, and deep knowledge. Indeed, he had dedicated his kitab as Sadiq wa al Sadaqa to Zayd, but he was disappointed that Zayd was not orthodox or consistent in his beliefs, and that he was, as Stern puts it, frequenting the society of the heretical authors of the Rasil Ikhwan as Safa, whose names are also recorded as follows Abu Sulaiman Muhammad b. Mashir al Bisti al Makdisi, Abul Hasan Ali b. Harun az Zanjani and Abu Ahmad al Mirajani, and al Aufi. At Tawhidi also reports in this connection the opinion expressed by Abu Sulaiman al Mantiki, his master, on the Rasail and an argument between a certain al Hariri, another pupil of al Mantiki, and Abu Sulaiman al Makdisi about the respective roles of revelation and philosophy. For many years, this was the only account of the author's identities, but al Tahidi's comments were second-hand evidence and so unsatisfactory. Further, the account is incomplete, as Abu Hayyan mentions that there were others besides these four. This situation lasted until al Tahidi's Kitab al Imta was published in 1942. This publication substantially supported al Kifti's work, although al Kifti apparently toned down the description and prominence of al Tahidi's charges that the Brethren were Bataniya, an esoteric Ismaili sect and thus heretics, possibly so as to not tar his friend Zayd with the same brush. Stern derives a further result from the published text of the Kitab al Imta wa al Muanasa, pointing out that a story al Tafidi ascribes to a personal meeting with Qadi Abul Hasan. Ali b. Harun as Zanjani, the founder of the group, appears in almost identical form in one of the epistles. While neat, Stern's view of things has been challenged by Tabawi, who points out some assumptions and errors Stern has made, such as the relationship between the story in al Tahidi's work and the epistles. Tabawi points out the possibility that the story was instead taken from a third, independent, and prior source. Al Tahidi's testimony has also been described as thus. The Ikhwan al Safa remain an anonymous group of scholars, but when Abu Hayyan al Tafidi was asked about them, he identified some of them Abu Sulaiman al Busti, known as al Mukadasa, Ali b. Harun al Zanjani, Muhammad al Narajori, or al Mirajani, al Afi, and Zayd ibn Rifi. 
The last contemporary source comes from the surviving portions of the Kitab Siwan al Hikmah c. 950 by Abu Sulaiman al Mantiki, al Tahidi's teacher, 912 to 985, which was a sort of compendium of biographies. Al Mantiki is primarily interested in the brethren's literary techniques of using parables and stories, and so he says only this little before proceeding to give some extracts of the encyclopedia. Abu Sulaiman al-Makdisi, he is the author of the 52 epistles inscribed the epistles of the sincere brethren, all of them are full with ethics and the science of They are current among people, and are widely read. I wish to quote here a few paragraphs in order to give an idea of the manner of their parables, thus bringing my book to an end. Al-Makdisi was previously listed in the Basra group of Al-Tafidi, here Stern and Hamdani differ, with Stern quoting Mantiki as crediting Makdisi with 52 epistles, but Hamdani says by the time of Al-Mantiki, the Rasail were almost complete he mentions 51 tracts. The second near contemporary record is another comment by Sharazari as recorded in the Tawarik al hukama or alternatively, the Tawarik al hakama specifically, it is from the Nuzhat al Arwa, which is contained in the Tawarik, which states, Abu Sulaiman Ma, B. Mashar B. Nasbi, who is known by the name of Makadisi, and Abu al Hasan B. Zarun Rayani, and Abu Ahmad Narajuri, and al Afi, and Zayd B. Rofa are the philosophers who compiled the memoirs of the Ikhwan al Kafa, which have been recorded by Makadisi. Hamdani disputes the general abovegoing identifications, pointing out that accounts differ in multiple details, such as whether Zayd was an author or not, whether there was a principal author, and who was in the group or not. He lays particular stress on quotes from the encyclopedia dating between 954 and 960 in the anonymous pseudo work Gayat al-Hakim, al-Makdisi and al-Zanjani are known to have been active in 983, he finds it implausible they would have written or edited so large an encyclopedia at least 25 to 30 years earlier, that is, around 343-954 to 348-960, when they would have been very young." He explains the Al-Tafidi narrative as being motivated by contemporary politics and issues of hereticism relating to the Karmatians, and points out that there is proof that Abu Hayyan has fabricated other messages and information. Amusingly, Alois Sprenger mentions this in a footnote. Since I wrote the first part of this notice I found one of the authors of these memoirs mentioned in the following terms, Zayd B. Rofa, one of the authors of the Ikhwan al-Safa, was extremely ignorant in tradition, and he was a liar without shame. Topic. The Epistles of the Brethren of Purity The Rasail Ikhwan al Safa Epistles of the Brethren of Purity consist of 52 treatises in mathematics, natural sciences, psychology, psychical sciences, and theology. The first part, which is on mathematics, groups 14 epistles that include treatises in arithmetic, geometry, astronomy, geography, and music, along with tracts in elementary logic, inclusive of the isagoge, the categories, de interpretation, the prior analytics, and the posterior analytics. The second part, which is on natural sciences, gathers 17 epistles on matter and form, generation and corruption, metallurgy, meteorology, a study of the essence of nature, the classes of plants and animals, including a fable. The third part, which is on psychology, comprises ten epistles on the psychical and intellective sciences, dealing with the nature of the intellect and the intelligible, the symbolism of temporal cycles, the mystical essence of love, resurrection, causes and effects, definitions and descriptions. The fourth part deals with theology in eleven epistles, investigating the varieties of religious sects, the virtue of the companionship of the brethren of purity, the properties of genuine belief, the nature of the divine law, the species of politics, and the essence of magic. They define a perfect man in their rasail as of East Persian derivation, of Arabic faith, of Iraqi, that is Babylonian, in education, Hebrew in astuteness, a disciple of Christ in conduct, as pious as a Syrian monk, a Greek in natural sciences, an Indian in the interpretation of mysteries and, above all a Sufi or a mystic in his whole spiritual outlook." There are debates on using this description and other materials of Rasail that could help with determination of the identity, affiliation with Ismaili, Sufism and other characteristics of Ikhwan al-Safa. 
The Rasail Ikhwan al Safa are available in print through a variety of Arabic editions, starting from the version established in Calcutta in 1812, then followed by the edition of Bombay of 1887 to 1889, then by the edition of Kher al Din al Zarili in 1928 in Cairo, and the Beirut Sadir edition by Buttress Bastani in 1957 and the version set by Arif Tamir in Beirut in 1995. All these editions are not critical and we do not yet have a complete English translation of the whole Rasil Encyclopedia. The first complete Arabic critical edition and fully annotated English translation of the Rasil Ikhwan al Safa is being prepared for publication by a team of editors, translators, and scholars as part of a book series that is published by Oxford University Press in association with the Institute of Ismaili Studies in London, a project currently coordinated by the series general editor Nader el Bizri. This series is initiated by an introductory volume of studies edited by Nader El Bizri, which was published by Oxford University Press in 2008, and followed in 2009 by the voluminous Arabic critical edition and annotated English translation with commentaries of the case of the animals versus man before the king of the jinn Epistle 22, eds. Trans. L. Goodman and R. McGregor, then Epistle 5, on music ed. Trans. O. Wright, 2010, Epistles 10-15, on Logic, ed. Trans. C. Bafioni, 2010, Epistle 52a, on Magic, eds. Trans. G. De Calate and B. Haflance, 2011, Epistles 1-2, Arithmetic and Geometry, ed. Trans. N. L. Bizri, 2012, The Voluminous Epistles 15-21, Natural Sciences, ed. Trans. C. Bafioni, 2013, Epistle 4, Geography, ed. Trans. I. Sanchez and J. Montgomery, 2014, Epistle 5, on Astronomia, ed. Trans. J. F. Ragep and T. Mamura, 2015, Epistles 32 to 36, Sciences of the Soul and Intellect, ed. Trans. I. Punawala, G. De Calate, P. Walker, D. Simonowitz, 2015. This OUP series received a large number of academic reviews in journals, including three review essays that were published in the Times Literary Supplement. Topic notes Topic References 1998 edition of the Routledge Encyclopedia of Philosophy, ed. Edward Craig, ISBN 0-415-18709-5 Nasser, Saeed Hossein an Introduction to Islamic Cosmological Doctrines, Conceptions of Nature and Methods Used for Its Study by the Iwan al-Safa, al-Biruni, and Ibn Sina. Belknap Press of Harvard University Press. LCCN 64-13430. Lane Poole, Stanley Studies in a Mosque First ed. Kayat Book and Publishing Company S.A.L. Retrieved 28 April 2007. Netan, Ian Richard Muslim Neoplatonists, An Introduction to the Thought of the Brethren of Purity 1st ed. Edinburgh University Press. ISBN 0-7486-0251-8. The Authorship of the Epistles of the Ikhwan as Safa, by Samuel Mikloche Stern, published by Islamic Culture of Hyderabad in 1947 Abu Hayyan al-Tafidi and the Brethren of Purity, Abbas Hamdani. International Journal of Middle East Studies, 9, 1978, 345-353 El Bizri, Nader, 2008. Epistles of the Brethren of Purity. Ikhwan al-Safa and their Rasail, 1st ed., Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-955724-0, El Bizri, Nader 2014, Ikhwan al-Saf, An Islamic Philosophical Fraternity, in Huari Tuati, ed., Encyclopedia of Mediterranean Humanism. Topic external links Vessel, Ziva, 2007. Ikhwan al-Saf. In Thomas Hockey, et al. The Biographical Encyclopedia of Astronomers. New York, Springer. ISBN 978-0-387-31022-0, PDF version. HTTP colon slash slash ismaili dot net slash histoire slash history 04 slash history 428.html Bafioni, Carmela. Ikwan al Safa. In Zalta, Edward N. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Article at the Encyclopedia Britannica. Iqwanis Safa, A Rational and Liberal Approach to Islam", by Ashgar Ali Engineer. The Classification of the Sciences According to the Rasail Iqwan al-Safa", by Godefroy de Calate 
The Institute of Ismaili Studies article on the Brethren, by Nader el Bizri. The Institute of Ismaili Studies Gallery of Images of Manuscripts of the Rasail of the Ikhwan al Safa. Article in Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Article in Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy.